12. The molecular mass of butanol, which is C4H9OH, is 74.14. That of ethylene glycol, which is CH2OH, CH2OH, is 62.08. Yet their boiling points are 117.2 degrees Celsius and 174 degrees Celsius, respectively. Explain the reason for this difference. All right, so let's just uh, list some things out here. So we're talking about butanol right, which they gave us the compound, which is C4H9OH. And they gave us ethylene glycol, which is CH2OHCH2OH. Now, they do give us the molecular masses, right? So C4H9OH is 74, and that's an awful 74, 74, oh boy. 74.14, and I'll just add the uh, unit AMU here. And then they said that the ethylene glycol was 62.08 AMU. Beautiful. But now, when we go to their boiling points, they said that uh, uh, butanol has 117.2 degrees Celsius for a boiling point, and ethylene glycol has 174 degrees Celsius for the boiling point. Now, generally speaking, the higher the atomic mass or the molecular mass, the higher the boiling point. But there seems to be an issue here. Butanol weighs higher, right? has more mass, but it's got the lower boiling point. What is going on with this difference? Well... In order to truly understand what's really going on, I would suggest writing out the molecular uh, structure, right? In terms of a Lewis structure. So maybe what I'll do is I will just take this and maybe move this over here, take the CH4H9OH and put it over here. Now, drawing the Lewis structures um, shouldn't be anything new here. We have tons of videos on the channel just designated towards um, drawing the Lewis structures. So you could pause the video if you want and try to draw them out. Well, let's see. If I have four carbons and nine hydrogens, this is just a generalization of saying that I should have four carbons linked together, so C, 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 and C. And now I have to put four uh, hydrogens around to get those carbons to have eight electrons. So I'll have one hydrogen here, I'll have another hydrogen here, another hydrogen here, that's three, four hydrogens, five hydrogens, six hydrogens, seven hydrogens, eight hydrogens, nine hydrogens, and now I have an OH group, which I will stick on over here. And just know that the oxygen has the four extra lone electrons, and that is what butanol looks like. Let's do the same thing for ethylene glycol. Now this is going from left to right. I have a carbon with two hydrogens in it. So I have a C that's bound with two hydrogens. It does not matter where you put the hydrogens. Maybe I'll put them on the, the side on the bottom. And then you're bound with one OH. So I have an O that's bound with an OH. That oxygen has the two lone pairs. The carbon is now bound to the next carbon who has the two hydrogens. One, two, and maybe I'll draw the, maybe I'll just do this on the other side because I'm kind of losing a little space here. Let's see, maybe I could bring this in a little bit. I think that's better. I have a bind, a bound, a bond to hydrogen. I have another hydrogen, and then I have an OH. And I guess to maybe make this just a little better, what I'll do is I'll just strip away this hydrogen and I'll put the bond over here. It doesn't matter where it is. Okay, cool. So this is what ethylene glycol, the Lewis structure looks like. So now, when we're talking about boiling points and why some boiling points don't follow the trend, generally speaking, we want to find out what's going on with the intermolecular forces. So whenever they're talking about boiling points, we always wanna just jot, jot down what types of intermolecular forces these uh, molecules have.
Now I did write on the bottom the three intermolecular forces that you have to worry about. And just know that as you start picking up intermolecular forces, you will increase your boiling point. So just know that dispersion forces, all compounds and all molecules have this force. So for both butanol and ethylene glycol, they will both have dispersion. So they do have a dispersion force because that's just a gimme. And maybe I'll write this down here. Actually, actually what I'll do, eh, I guess I'll write it over here. Dispersion. The next one is dipole-dipole attraction. And just know that for these, only polar covalent molecules have dipole-dipole attractions. And remember, polar molecules, if I could just write it over here, polar molecules means that you have some type of asymmetry going on in your molecule. You'll have an asymmetrical molecule. So for example, if I look over here and I try to cut this down the middle, well, I have an OH on one side and literally, you know, no OH on the other side. So this molecule is asymmetrical, and therefore, this will have dipole-dipole attraction, which will jack up the boiling point. Same thing goes with this one. I could cut this down the middle, and it looks like, in which I drew, you know, I have an OH on this side, and I have my OH on this side. Doesn't really look symmetrical. Keep in mind that I could have wrote the OH on the top here as well. And then you won't have any OHs on the bottom to kind of cancel them out. So this one is also a polar molecule, which means that you also have dipole-dipole forces or attractions. So there's really nothing different here to make one boiling point much more than the other. But the last intermolecular force is the most specific, which is the hydrogen bond. And just know that only molecules that have a hydrogen, that's either bound with a nitrogen, an oxygen, and a fluorine, will be able to hydrogen bond. So now if I look at butanol, I do notice that I have a hydrogen that is attached to an oxygen. So this part of the molecule can hydrogen bond. And therefore, I have, and maybe, maybe I'll just draw this in blue, Right, this is hydrogen bond, HB. So I have hydrogen bonding here. All the other uh, hydrogens that are bound to the carbons do not have hydrogen bonding because they don't fall in the, the category of HN, HO, and HF. But now if I look at ethylene glycol, I'm looking for those hydrogen bonds. I see that I have a hydrogen that's bound to an oxygen up top here. So that's hydrogen bonding. But then I also have another hydrogen that's bound to an oxygen down here. Oh, that's another hydrogen bonding. So they both have hydrogen bonding. But you may be able to see why ethylene glycol, even though it has a lower mass, has a higher boiling point. What's the difference? They both have the three intermolecular forces, but what's the difference between them in terms of hydrogen bonding? Yeah, you got it. In ethylene glycol, you have two OHs, so that's more chances of hydrogen bonding. If you have more chances of hydrogen bonding, you're going to jack up the boiling point even more. So explain the difference. You could just say that, you know, ethylene glycol, ethylene glycol, has two OH groups, making it have more chances of hydrogen bonding. More chances to hydrogen bond, the intermolecular force hydrogen bond. And because of that, because of the two OHs and not just the one, this will extremely I mean, we're talking about, you know, 60 degrees, this will increase the boiling point. And that is the final answer.
So it all comes down to now, in this case, the number of hydrogen bonding. The more number of OHs, NHs, or FHs will increase your boiling point. That's it. I hope that this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope to talk to you in later lessons. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. And always keep learning. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.